This is the first part of a series about solid state Tesla coils. So let's start today with this high power layer exciter circuit, which is very simple. So this is the schematic. Maybe you recognize it that it is a slightly modified version of the schematic made by Tesla und Mehr. And it's just a simple single transistor kind of slayer exciter coil. But it's kind of beefed up, it has a MOSFET right here. And in my case I put a neon bulb across the primary to limit the primary voltage spike so that they don't destroy the transistor. Additionally, you could also add a 12 to 15 volt TVS diode between the gate and ground, but that wasn't necessary in my case. Then we have the secondary here, which in my case it is just one of those cheap Chinese secondary coils I had laying around. And for this capacitor right here, a 4.7 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, I used two capacitors, which is actually better because then the heat that is produced by the capacitor is spread over two capacitors instead of just one. Since I didn't just want it to run on constant wave the entire time, I also added an interrupter with a 555 timer, but if you want to interrupt this coil you can use about anything. You can use like an A-stable multivibrator or a 555 timer interrupter. I'll put some schematics on the screen so you can see what that would look like. You would just put that in series to the power rail here to interrupt the power to the coil. And for tuning this coil you don't have to tune it since it's self-tuning and has a feedback here from the bottom of the secondary. But what you gotta do is that you have to rotate this potentiometer the first time you power it up until it starts oscillating. If it doesn't, just swap the connections on the primary coil and then it should run. And for how this coil actually works, it's also very simple. We just get a current flow through the primary because the transistor is um, biased by this voltage divider. Then as soon as the current starts flowing, it generates a magnetic field which induces a voltage in the secondary coil. And as soon as that voltage has reached its maximum, it's gonna turn off the transistor by stealing its current and so dropping the voltage on its gate. And like that, the transistor is gonna turn off. As soon as the transistor is off though, the current will st stop flowing in this coil and so the magnetic field will collapse. And like that the voltage will sink on this coil and it can't draw power from the transistor's gate anymore. And like that it turns on again and the cycle repeats in a self-oscillating manner. So now let's do some measurements about this Tesla coil using this oscilloscope. So now, as we can see, the resonance frequency of the secondary is about 4.25 MHz. We got a duty cycle of about 50% and the voltage we are measuring is about 800 to 900 millivolt. And I've just put the probe on the table here so it can pick up the electromagnetic radiation from the coil. And if we, for example, add uh, this heatsink, which increases the secondary capacitance. We can see that now the resonance frequency is about 3.7 MHz. The duty cycle is still the same, but the waveform has gotten bigger and the voltage we measure now is about 1.6 volts. And that's also the reason why we can draw bigger arcs with this top load. So now let me show you how I built this coil into this enclosure. We just have the board with the Tesla coil driver on here with all the components, the secondary, primary and so on. Then the transistor is mounted on this heat sink and we have this 12 volt blower that blows through the fins of the heat sink here to cool down the transistor. 
Then if we open it further, we can see that here we have another heatsink. Now this heatsink is used for this transistor right here, which was supposed to be used for audio modulation, but unfortunately that did not really work out. So I, it's not really in use right now, but maybe I will use it in the future. And my design here is that the air that is sucked in by the blower has to go through these heatsink fins. Like that, this transistor gets cooled and then the air gets blown out through these fins to cool this transistor. So like a two-in-one solution to cool both of these heatsinks with one blower. And then we have the air intake holes here. Now this is the driver circuit for the interrupter I'm using right now. It's just a 555 timer interrupter circuit that pulses at a few hertz. I can adjust that with this potentiometer which is mounted in the case right here. And then this circuit here signals to this IRF Z44 which has some protective senior diodes on it which is kind of overkill. And then this transistor here switches the power that goes into the coil. And then we have a bypass switch here which is for the CW mode which just basically bypasses this transistor so that we get a constant power to the coil. And that's all I did here and the entire circuit is powered from this 12 volt 2 amp wall adapter. So now this is a little demo of the coil running. So let's power it up. As we can hear the fan has spun up and we got an output from the coil. Now we can change the frequency of those arcs with this knob here. Now, for example, they're pulsing at a slower rate than here. We can also draw little arcs from the coil. Nothing too impressive though. But now let me show you the electromagnetic power transfer to this light bulb here. Warning though, since the coil is now in an interrupted mode, there will be a lot of flashing. So an epilepsy warning from me here. But now let's see it. We can see that the bulb flashes quite brightly uh, close to the coil. And of course the flashing of the light changes depending on the frequency of the arcs. But since that flashing light is quite annoying, let's switch to the CW mode. And now we have a constant output. Now we put the light close to it, there is no flickering anymore and we get quite a decent power transfer. Like the light is still flickering slightly and I gotta say that it's quite impressive how bright this light is. When it's right near the coil it's basically at full brightness so that's quite nice. We can also set it down there and it continues to glow. So in this clip I held a light bulb near it and the argon in the bulb was glowing very nicely and created some absolutely stunning patterns. So I hope you enjoy. So this is all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Stay safe and keep exploring science. This was Science by Sergio and I'm out.